All right, so it's time for Impact. And, uh, you know, this show is... I got really mixed feelings about Impact. And I'll tell you why. It's like, it's got moments of greatness throughout. It's sure as hell was a lot better than both SmackDown and Raw. I mean, by a fucking long shot. I mean, it was fucking way better than those fucking shows. I mean, you take a two-hour show and you compare it to a three-hour piece of crap and SmackDown, which was a two-hour piece of crap, and, you know, you got a show that is actually looking kind of decent in comparison. So even though I ain't a TNA fanboy douche, I got to say that, you know, in comparison, it looks a little bit better. I mean, when you put them against each other, I'm actually, like, willing to admit that. I'm not saying I'm a TNA fan, but I got to say, when you compare them, it's kind of hard to make the argument, like, nowadays, when you compare the current stuff. But if we're just, like, overall comparing the two companies, come on. WWE has some of the best wrestling in history. But anyway, uh, we start off with uh, Ace and Ace. And one guy's banging a gavel. I'm thinking to myself, what is this, an episode of The Honeymooners? Is that Ralph Cramden under there? Is that is he, like, at a, 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 a Raccoon Lodge uh, meeting or something like that? <laughs> Like, well, what are they doing here? Like, this is so far-fetched. They're in a clubhouse. They ain't even on the contract with TNA. So how the fuck do they make their payments on their motorcycles? How the hell do they make their payments on their motorcycle insurance? Can you fucking explain that to me? I mean, like, this is so far-fetched. I mean, they don't even fucking technically have jobs. They're in this club, but there's no profit to be had in a fucking club. You usually gotta pay money to be a part of a club. Clubs cost money. So... I don't know what the fuck that's all about. Anyway, they're talking to um, Doc. Now, who's Doc, you might ask? Is this like fucking Doc Holiday? Is this just like a new guy with a new gimmick? You know, is he like a doctor character? Is he Isaac Yankum? Nah, he ain't a dentist. He's Doc, but um... You know, who is it? It's fucking Luke Gallows. They're calling him Doc. Why? They said they got. He's got to prove himself tonight. They're wrestling fucking Doc, fucking goddamn Doc. Yeah, what's up, Doc? I, like, what the fuck? Or, this is fucking Bugs Bunny or some shit. So it definitely reminds me of Looney Tunes because it's so fucking silly. But I, I don't know. So anyway, uh, we find out they they show us it's gonna be Angle and Sting versus um, Devon and Doc. And Doc is actually short for Director of Chaos. This is this is even worse than the arm breaker, the director of chaos. I mean, what kind of a name is this? This just sounds like something from a fucking B movie. I expect like in, in <laughs> like some fucking shitty ass like monsters to come out or some shit. Director of chaos. Uh, like is Dolph Lundgren starring in this movie with this fucking title? What the hell's going on here? Then you got a uh, rude. Defeating uh, uh, AJ Styles in the first match. And this is actually a pretty good match. Holy shit. And the ending. Oof, I like the little bump that AJ took. He got beat because he got distracted by fucking James Storm. But, you know, I like the match. I thought it was pretty good. No complaints here. Sure of a, a hell of a lot better than, um, than anything on fucking Raw or SmackDown this week. I mean, Raw had like a good six-man tag. But, nah, this match was a little bit better than that. I liked it. Um, then all of a sudden they're showing us the matches for tonight. And uh, you got... Uh, it, it gets all fucking staticky and it's breaking up. I, I thought the NWO was about to come out. Nah, it wasn't the NWO. Say fucking uh, WWE or WCW. It's a commercial for Halo 4. Now I'll actually tell you like actually what I thought it was. When they do shit like that, it's usually like a promo for a new wrestler or something like that. Now, it wasn't anything like that. It was a commercial for a fucking video game. And by the way, everybody knows on here I'm a big time gamer, but I don't like the Halo series. And what's this staticky shit? It's just fucking lame. That actually looked kind of cool, but you know, it was just kind of weird. I, I find myself saying that a lot during Impact. Yeah, it's just weird. You know, it's weird. It's, kinda, it's goofy. You know, it's like different, but... You know, they're doing things that are different, which is better than WWE doing the same old shit. But it's just like, ah, you know, you just want to make fun of it. Um, 
then Sting goes crazy backstage. I got the feeling like they're trying to make Sting like even more crazier. That like they don't want to do the Joker gimmick, but they're still making him crazy. And I guess it's because also Ric Flair is gone, so you know they 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 want to like make up for that lack of insanity, like a crazy old man or some shit. But he just keeps fucking screaming and everything, and I'm just like, ah, stop screaming already. He's got some jobber, like, jobbers, Wes Briscoe's there. Like, he calls him a, sh he calls him a Kurt Angle shadow. That's all you're gonna be is a fucking shadow, Wes. Fucking jobber. Fucking nobody. Uh, then Joseph Park cuts a promo in the, in the ring. He wants to fight. Hogan comes out. Says, hey, brother. I want you fighting, brother. And, uh... Then you got Bubba Ray coming out. And he convinces Hogan to say yes. And they end up shaking hands. No. Uh, it was okay. It wasn't like boring or anything. But uh, this whole Joseph Park thing is like a little bit fucking lame. Fucking lawyers fighting in wrestling matches. Just bring back Abyss or just forget about it. Uh, then you got ODB... Defeating uh, Jesse and Tara in a handicap match. Well, I don't fucking see the point of uh, of ever doing ODB versus Tara. Because she fucking beat them in less than two minutes. And how much sense does that make? I mean, this guy Jesse, I mean, he's a fucking jabroni. But, uh, you know, he's pretty jacked and shit. So, but I'm not, like, buying the fact that she could, like, she's more powerful than him. She could just run right through him and, and also Tara at the same time. I mean, ODB's like a big woman, you know, like uh, a stronger woman. But she, uh, you know, she couldn't, like, beat both of them. It's not realistic or anything like that. Not a terrible little squash match. But, you know, I wasn't, like, really entertained. Then we finally get the tag matches. Sting and Angle, uh, and they defeat uh, Doc. Doc! And Devon by disqualification. Um, you know, I don't know, uh, he didn't say what's up, Doc. He didn't bring, like, a little medical kit down to the ring, so I'm not really too sure, like, if this guy's really got, like, a, an MD license or anything like that. I, you know, I don't think he's able to prescribe you anything, so I don't know. I don't think the gimmick's going too well. I, I don't like the way that, that, that uh, this guy's gimmick's going, you know. He doesn't really seem like a doctor to me. Uh, anyway... Kind of a uh, a slow uh, match with a lot of like uh, like just choking in the corner. Then Angle comes in and he just fucks everybody up. I mean, I swear to God, Kurt Angle is the most fucking awesome guy in TNA. I mean, this guy's like neck is like his head's about to fucking fall off his shoulders. That's how bad his neck is. And this guy is like still fucking going all in. I mean, he's just like fucking kicking everybody's ass still. Um, you know, f like 40 plus years old and still just like, just doing amazing shit in the ring. Uh, but not such a great match aside from that little like 30 second burst of energy from Angle at the end. It just ends when the Ace and Eights, uh, an Ace and Eights member comes in, one of the masked ones, and, and hits him with a, uh, uh, hits Sting with a hammer. Um, it ends in disqualification. And then... Holy shit, I mean, this was just like, it was fucking brutal what took place next. You got uh, Bubba Ray coming in, and he gets um, fucking choke slammed through a table, and then they take a fucking hammer, and it looked pretty fucking real, and fucking Doc, I mean, I finally, you know, I, he goes to check Sting's reflexes. But he just fucking hits him really hard. I'm like, holy shit. He keeps hitting him with the hammer. And it's it's looking pretty fucking, like, brutal. I mean, uh, you know, the only thing that could have made this a little bit better if maybe Sting was bleeding from the mouth. But I'll take what I could get in this day and age of professional wrestling with all the PG bullshit. I mean, it looked pretty fucking realistic, I have to say. Uh, big beatdown. They made it all serious, like Sting is really hurt, but I liked how it looked, and uh, I mean, you know, you knew he wasn't really hitting him, but 
they made it look pretty fucking real. Um, then we get gut check with uh, with the Roid Master, fucking Christian York. This guy's been like he can't get over. So what does he do? He hasn't gotten hired by WWE or anything. So he takes a whole bunch of roids in hopes of getting a contract. And hey, what do you know? He gets uh, gets a contract. Uh, what the fucking do? I mean, the thing is, what, like, fucking pisses me off about this, Christian York ain't, ain't terrible. It's just that, like, this guy's been wrestling for a pretty fucking long time. Um, not very charismatic. No, he's, like, an okay worker. He's not amazing or anything, never has been. You know, he's just, like, one of those guys that's, like, okay, he's in between. He ain't terrible, he ain't good. Uh, Al Snow is wearing a ridiculous-looking jacket. Like, I think he should have stuck with Head. Because you remember the mannequin Head used to talk to him. Yeah, he used to talk to him and, like, give him advice. Maybe he could have told him that that was a gigantic fashion violation right there. Look at that fucking soup. Disgusting. Fucking, like, does this guy, like, know how to fucking dress? He should probably still have his mom lay out his clothes in the fucking bed for him. Cause, uh, that fucking jacket. What the hell was that shit? Even Taz makes fun of it. They all make fun of his jacket. Just another, like, uh, another joke added to Mick Foley's endless list of jokes about Al Snow. This guy can't do anything right, fucking Al Snow. So Joey Ryan's there, and, you know, every single fucking wrestler that went through Gut Check, except for Joey Ryan, hasn't fucking appeared on Impact since. You know, the thing is, Christian York probably has, with this gut check thing going on, has a little bit more going for him than um, Zima Ion. And last week, he could have fucking become an instant star. Imagine if he comes out with all the gut check hype that they always put forth. And he beats Christian York. He would be the only gut check member to earn a victory. It, you know, among like, what, it, what was probably like seven or eight gut check people. And that would set him apart from the rest. And and the audience, impact small audience anyway, would you know believe that this guy was really special because he would fucking win, be the first gut check winner instead of a fucking gut check loser because it almost became it becomes predictable when you okay oh okay gut check you know yeah gut check that means that everybody's just gonna fucking lose and they're just gonna be great on how well they did in the match and how much desire they had. Nah, he could have fucking won. I mean, if Christian York, they're touting him as a 16-year veteran in, in the sport of professional wrestling, you know, him winning would actually make sense because it's not like it's a no-name jobber like the other people have been. Oh, you know, like, people have heard of Christian York. He was in ECW for a short time. You know, people know him. Um, so, you know, they, they fucking uh, fucked that up already. Because now you just know that Christian York, if if he does make it on Impact, maybe you know, he'll be the first guy besides Joey Ryan to make it on to Impact. But if he does, I don't see anything more than just like Jobber written all over him. Then they do something weird. Austin Aries is talking on a cell phone. And he, inter he stops for a moment. And Bully Ray and, and Brooke Hogan, Hogan's daughter, is... Um, is talking above a ray and they're like conspiring him against him or something like he's saying he doesn't want him to find out you know and then after this happens the announcers don't say shit about it aren't they watching the same thing that we're watching like how the fuck did they not hear that did were they fucking like just ignoring that shit I mean, like, you're going to do this a gigantic fucking storyline angle there. You have something that has potential there to be interesting. I mean, there you go. Bully Ray shook Hogan's hand. And now he's using his daughter to, like, pull one over on Hogan. And they don't even fucking mention it. So they got an interesting idea in their minds, the writers. But they don't want to fucking mention it. I mean... That just makes Tanae and Taz look stupid. And it just makes TNA look fucking cheap. Like they're ignoring it. I mean maybe they wanted you to piece it together yourselves. But I mean realistically. If this is supposed to be like real. If we're thinking about this like this show is supposed to be real. You know all jokes aside for a minute. This show is real. Just imagine it. And something happens on the show. 
Don't you think that, like, the commentators would mention it? Like, oh, what's that all about? You know, like, that they could have at least said that. But they said nothing! Then we get the main event. It's Kaz, Daniels, and Magnus defeating uh, Samoa Joe, Chavo, and Hernandez. An okay main event. You know, it was like fucking ten minutes. And um, the thing about this match is that like the first like seven or eight minutes was pretty fucking boring actually. Because it was just all a bunch of like stomps and like choking in the corner. You know, just a like little like slow rock and roll express beatdown. Yeah, they're doing a rock and roll express beatdown. The same shit they're doing in WWE. So um, it, then it picks up at the end, and then you know we get some like cool little sequences. Nothing special, but it, it was okay. You know, not nothing overly horrible. Then we get the last segment. It's Austin Aries, and this guy can't cut promos for shit. He comes out. Jeff Hardy comes out. Um, he attacks Ares and then he climbs the ladder apparently um, you know they lower down the, this little like hanger and he puts both belts on it and it raises up he pulls it at the top of the ladder and, and Ares kicks him off the ladder um, apparently at the, the turning point they're going to have to hang both belts up there so I guess they have to retrieve both belts that's just my assumption based on what I saw um, so, you know, I, I, I don't know, you know, this, I wasn't really feeling like big time hype for Turning Point here. Then again, I wasn't feeling big time hype for Bound for Glory either. I mean, it, like, you didn't really get the feeling a, a pay-per-view was coming up around the corner. I mean, like, holy shit, it's like almost like they didn't care that a pay-per-view was coming. As far as this show goes, it was entertaining. Where the fuck was Jeff Hardy's inner thoughts? I thought for a minute that, you know, he was going to, like, think during the in-ring promo, which would have been fucking hilarious, so a missed opportunity for some amazing comedy there. But, um, you know, that's just how I think of TNA, actually. It's like a fucking comedy show. Not a horrible show. I was definitely more entertained than Raw and SmackDown. And even the fucking boring parts were still better than Raw and SmackDown. And as I said, I'm not a TNA fanboy. But this shit is it's just better. You know, at, at this point, I'm just I'm more entertained. Uh, so yeah, there you go. An okay impact. Nothing too fucking bad. Nothing too great here. Alright.